Every once in a while, you play a game that grabs you from the moment you press play. Sometimes it's a game you've been looking forward to for years, other times it's a game you've only just heard of and aren't expecting much from. For me, it would be the latter half when it comes to Glitched, an RPG so reminiscent of Undertale it's practically a fan game. But Glitched is so much more than its humble aspirations. Playing what is just an early demo, I'm convinced it's the best game I played this year. Glitch raised $68,000 on Kickstarter in August 2016, meaning, if my math is right, the game's been in development for at least four years. After playing this demo, it's clear developer in-house studios has spent all of that time and money making the best game they possibly could. The key to understanding Glitched is its connection to Undertale, however loose that is. This isn't a typical RPG experience, because it often goes out of its way to not only break the fourth wall by directly referencing that it's a video game and talking to the player, but also it messes with your expectations while doing it. There have been other fourth wall breaking games like this in the past, and most of them don't work because they usually think they're more clever than they actually are, but Glitched actually is clever. The demo starts with a frog sitting behind his desk at Frog Inc, talking to you, the player, directly. He says that before the game can begin, you have to complete a personality test so they can create a game around you. The questions start off benignly enough, asking you about your favorite color and season, but then start to confuse even the frog asking you the questions. You're then given a hero, a generic looking RPG protagonist named Conrad, with an equally generic backstory. Conrad is about to start a noble journey across the realm of Sorin, looking for adventure, leaving behind his hometown betwixt where he spent his whole life. It's standard RPG stuff, but after only a couple of minutes, Conrad has an uneasy feeling that someone is watching him. After meeting his friend Gus and telling him about a weird dream with a frog and a personality test he had, a weird thing suddenly appears in the sky. This unknown mess of pixels grabs both Conrad and Gus, and you're prompted to either save Gus or leave him behind. The game crashes, which forces you to reopen, and then you're put in control of Gus, with Conrad nowhere in sight. Not long after, the boss of Frog Inc. tells you that the game is experiencing glitches and that you can't play anymore while they're fixing the bug. He apologizes and tells you not to hit continue from the main menu. Doing so will have him appear again and yell at you for trying to play, but if you insist on playing, he'll tell you that Gus is supposed to be a random NPC, not a main character, and that once they fix the glitch, the game will reset and you'll go back to playing as Conrad but he lets you continue anyway. And that's what makes Glitch so compelling. There's a meta-commentary within a meta-commentary. You're playing yourself, who went to Frog Inc. to play a great new video game, handcrafted to fit your personality, but that game glitched and now you've decided to play a random NPC, but you're not really playing as Gus either, because from the beginning he's somehow aware of you, the player, being there, watching him, telling him what to do. But he doesn't know that he's in a video game, and he doesn't know what Frog Inc. is, or why all these frogs keep talking to you. So all throughout the game, NPCs who are acting normally as they would in a video game or talking to Gus, Gus is talking directly to you about his life and the adventure he's on to find Conrad, and employees of Frog Inc. are also talking to you about how this is all a game while Gus sits there confused. There are so many layers and spinning plates and yet the game keeps it all perfectly balanced thanks to several unique systems. When you first take control of Gus, you're introduced to this game's stat system, called Essence. There are six different Essence stats, Zeal, Insight, Harmony, Conquest, Drift, and Bastion. Each is basically a personality trait, and rather than assigning points into one like you would a traditional RPG, these stats are instead influenced by the choices you make, which is where that personality quiz at the start comes back in. How you answer that, as well as other choices you made leading up to this, defines your starting Essence stats. This is important, because of these six, one of them acts as your guiding essence, which will give you a new magic ability and affect Gus's personality. Remember, you're not really playing him, you're guiding him, so he'll occasionally say and do things on his own. What's great about this system is that none of these essences are inherently good or bad. They each have their own strengths and weaknesses. My guiding essence was insight, which is good because it let me think about problems before throwing myself into danger head first, but it had the disadvantage that sometimes I overthink things and don't act act fast enough, meaning some options won't be available to me, and I'll inevitably miss something anyway. And if that wasn't good enough, your guiding essence can change throughout the game. Almost every impactful 
decision you make will be tied to one of these essences. And if you keep picking one essence that isn't your guiding one, that will overtake it and become your new guiding essence, which will change the way Gus acts. It's such a simple but brilliant system where your choices actually feel like they matter. Then there's the meta narrative, where not only the frogs keep talking to you, but also this character called Rewardo, who keeps giving you a cryptocurrency you're supposed to use outside the game called the frog coins for completing the most basic of achievements, like reading five books or opening ten doors. Gus will sometimes stop the game entirely and talk to you either about his life or how he's feeling, but as the game goes on, he becomes more wary of you, questioning who you are and why you're helping him when he doesn't even know you, and who all these dang frogs are and why they keep talking about some kind of game. My favorite part is this character called Cog, who works at Frog Inc. He tries to get you to buy a mud from him, which is this game's menu system. You can keep telling him no, and he'll keep dropping the price and telling you how important it is, until finally he gets so annoyed that he looks into the camera, addresses you, the player, by name, or at least the one you typed in at the start, and tells you that if you say no again, you won't have a menu, and that the game will basically be unplayable. He says if you still refuse to take the mud, you better not go look online to see if there's some other way to get it later, or complain about how dumb the game is. Well, always one to look a gift horse in the mouth, I again said no. So he left without giving me the mud, and sure enough, I didn't have access to the main menu system throughout the demo, except for the early part where you're playing as Conrad. The game was… well, it wasn't unplayable. I couldn't access my inventory, see my stats, a map, or save. You can't even access the main menu to quit, so you have to either alt-tab or control-alt-delete your way out. The game is technically still playable, but the experience is much worse as a result. And no, you really don't get another chance to get the mud either. This game is incredible. There are so many well-written, funny, and amusing characters like that throughout. Even the characters that aren't funny are given plenty of time to shine. and the undercut the humor well to remind you what you're supposed to be doing and why you're doing it. The glitch that disappeared Conrad is a threat to the village, causing everyone headaches and memory loss, so you're sent to the big city to deliver a message asking for help. And this leads to another thing I love about this demo. There's an optional objective to first talk to the town scientist and get data he's collected about the glitch, which everyone thinks is some kind of magic, which will change the story once you get to the town. But there's another optional objective that you can only unlock by doing that first optional objective, and that's to go around town talking to people about what they did that night, which is when everyone tells you about their headaches, which of course adds another layer to the story. There's so much depth to the quest design with multiple dialogue options and optional objectives, and that's not something you often see in these kind of indie RPGs. Even after only an hour or so in, you really get the sense that every decision you make drastically changes the story. I've only just scratched the surface of talking about my time with Glitched. My mind kept coming back to Undertale throughout playing this game, and I think you can see why. It's obvious that game was a huge inspiration to in-house, but I also picked up on Mog World vibes too. Yahtzee Croshaw's book, with a protagonist talking to the player of a video game and being at least somewhat self-aware. Comparing games to each other too much I find to be reductive, but honestly, this game could be the next Undertale in terms of cultural impact. All the components are here. The quality, the fourth wall breaking that's more than a dumb joke, the humor and charm, the cleverness. If anything, Glitch takes that meta-commentary on gaming a step further than Undertale did. Honestly, the only negative thing I can think to say is that sometimes the dialogue goes off the bottom of the text box on the screen and you can't read it, but that only happened two or three times and it was only a single word. I came into the demo for Glitched expecting a somewhat generic old school pixel art RPG and I was blown away by its creativity, its writing, characters, and gameplay systems. I know I hyped the game up a lot in this video, which could set it up to fail in some people's minds, but I'm confident that won't happen. Do yourself a favor and play the demo for Glitched as soon as you can. The game should come out later this year or in early 2021. And if you want to see more of its or any other great indie games, subscribe to Triple I and be sure to share this video so the world can know how great this game is. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.